screen and showing you uh, one of the landmark of my work with my ensemble. See, uh, what I'd like to tell you today is about how the arc evolved, where we started with one concert in Los Angeles, a concert for peace in 1999. And I was um, under the impression that it would be just one concert. We just did one concert for peace in the Middle East to bring Israelis and Palestinians together to bring Christians and Muslims and Jews together. And then in one concert, we discovered that the music had incredible power to bring people together. And the musicians in my ensemble who come from all three traditions, all three religions of the Middle East, Islam, Judaism and Christianity, the musicians asked me to keep going to keep practicing and keep playing together. So from one concert came 20 years of international touring and teaching and incredible, incredible adventure. One of that adventure was that we met Rachel Cohen in 2002 in San Diego in a showcase and we signed up with Rachel and we've been with Rachel for 18 years now. And we've been touring all over the US and all over the world. and. One of the one of the uh, incredible moment that we had was in 2009. We were invited by the King of Morocco, Muhammad VI, to be the featured band in the International Sacred Music Festival in Fez, which is considered the number one sacred music festival in the world. You know, Stevie Wonder performed there. Uh, I mean, everybody performed there. Um, so, not only we were featured artist in that festival in 2009, CNN came there to do a story about this unique festival that bring people from all over the world together for peace. CNN chose for some reason out of 44 different artists that performed that year in the festival, they decided to focus their story on my ensemble. So let me share with you the screen and play for you this CNN story. Here it is. This is very emotional for me to sit in Fez, Morocco. And to say Shalom Aleichem in Hebrew, the language of Abraham, it's the language of Jesus, the language of Moses, and it's a language that even Muhammad knew. Without hesitation, Yuval Ron accepted the invitation to play at the 2009 Fez Festival of World Sacred Music in Fez, Morocco. It's a religious city, it's a spiritual city, it's the place for the sacred music, and that is what I'm trying to do. The festival was inspired after the first Gulf War with the intention of showing that musical harmony can be louder than political differences. A message that deeply resonates with Yuval. When I grew up in Israel, and if I would hear Arabic, it would create fear, because that's how we are raised. After moving to the United States, Yuval found a Palestinian singer, Najwa Jabran. She is Arabic and I'm Jewish, and we would never meet in Israel, and we would never work together. And now we met in, uh, in America, and we became like brother and sister. Through my relationship with my singer, with Najwa, I transformed from feeling fear when I hear the language Arabic to feeling beauty. It breaks my heart. It is it's so sad. And I try to reach out to, to my people, to the Arabic people I know. All they know about Israelis is they saw Israeli aircraft coming and dropping a bomb on their family's house. And all, that's all they know. 
I try to bring them in through the music I do so they can experience what I'm experiencing. Not to, not to undermine anybody's experiences, whether they are painful experiences, but to shed light through the music that there is hope. In the more than week-long festival in a country that's 98% Muslim, sounds become increasingly unifying. Beautiful. Very, very beautiful. From gospel, Algerian rock, to whirling dervishes, the music, the way this world, it's really, it's mystical, it's spiritual, it, it brings you in another reality, I would say. Among the people in this crowd are Africans, Europeans, Americans, a diverse background of people. But many here say the music on the stage is like a universal language. Yuval and his ensemble say it makes sense. You hear that? That, that glide down. That's the signature of the sound that they're all using. Strumming the oud, he shows us musical instruments play that universal language. The same scale is used to express deep emotions like love and sorrow. The Jews are using it to express that emotion, and the Muslims use it to express the same emotion. And if you just stop, and you say, hey, my neighbor speaks the same musical language as I am. Maybe I'm more like him than we thought. Sima Mather, Fez, Morocco. Being in Morocco in 2010 and playing in this incredible festival was one of the highlights of our work. We discovered that not only people and countries that are connected to Middle Eastern music and North African music are moved deeply by our music. Uh, we received invitations from Korea, from Poland, from um, Mexico, uh, Armenia, uh, we've been to India, we've been all over the world. And um, in 2005, we were inv invited by the government of South Korea to play a concert for peace on the border with North Korea. We played for North Korean military on the border. That was an incredible experience. And somehow, whenever we play, whenever we play, people feel deeply the connection of humanity through the music that we play. Something melts the heart, something touches a human deep spark of light in the hearts of the people and they just soften a little bit. They, they connect to something deeper through the music that we all share and that is the power of this music and this work. I'd like to share with you another YouTube video that summarizes the different kind of work and the reaction of people to what we do. So this is a video called The Gift and it shows a variety of different events that we've done.
this ensemble of Jewish, Muslim and Christian musicians and dancers in order to create harmony, in order to bring out beauty, in order to inspire people to see the unifying force which is in all these traditions of the Middle East. Sufi music that we play and the willing dervish that turns and turns and does this exquisite movement meditation prayer, these are part of the ecstatic journey that we take in our concert. And we do it in order to leave behind the illusion of separation, that feeling that there is us and there is them and the two are separated one from another because in truth we are all connected the mystics know it and now modern science is confirming that we are all dependent on each other we are all one of Andalusia, this old music, we present in a new way. We bring in some flamenco music influences, some orchestral influences, some Moroccan trance influences, and by that we breathe new life and we energize this old beautiful music of the Jews of Spain.
I'd like to tell you about the next stage, the next involvement of our ensemble. Uh, in recent years, we added electric bass, sometimes electric guitar, uh, keyboards, Hammond organ, all kinds of uh, pop and rock uh, and R&B elements to our music. And our new album, Unity, Unity of the Heart, includes those. And I have a couple of clips to uh, play for you. But before we move on, if you have any question about what you've seen thus far, feel free to unmute yourself by hitting the holding the space bar. Okay, no questions at all. Everything is crystal clear. It is crystal clear to me. When I look at this and I hear this, I'm, I'm deeply moved by how people are moved to the music that we are bringing to them. And that's one of the things that make me go on the road for the last 20 years. The pandemic, actually, for me, it's a welcomed rest. I'm tired of going on the road and going into airports and going through airport securities and going from hotel to hotel. So for me, the pandemic have been a nice rest. And I'm working on new albums in my studio. We are recording a lot of new materials. We've got um, five albums in production right now. One is being released, two of them released, going to be released this spring. There's another release in the summer. Uh, during the pandemic, I completed uh, mixing another album called Four Divine States that was released in July. And it, it got incredible reviews. Uh, it's an album with Deva Premal and Estrella Morente, the great uh, flamenco singer. So we are working in the studio doing remote recordings, and we're very happy with that. Um, I feel a little bit of uh, longing to the connection with the communities. I feel that. But I, I don't miss the travel. I don't miss the airports. And I don't miss dealing with all the logistics on the road. But I do miss the moment where we connect with the communities. And one, one unique thing about our ensemble is that at the end of each concert, no matter where we are, even if we are in the Opera House in Seattle or if we are in the Opera House in Los Angeles or in a, we are in a small community center, after the concert, we always go to the lobby to meet the people. And we spend an hour to an hour and a half meeting people, hugging them, uh, talking to them, hearing their stories, signing our autographs and merchandise, um, and answering questions. That is something that I miss. I miss that connection. And during the show, when people sing along with us and when people dance, we had one concert in UCLA where uh, in Schoenberg Hall in UCLA, and they had a rule that people cannot dance in the aisle because of fire code. And our audience, it was full. It was completely sold out. There were maybe 500 people in the seats and they start dancing. And in the intermission, uh, the manager of the theater came to me and said, you know, tell, tell your people not to dance in the aisle because we're going to shut down the show because it's against the fire code and we cannot control them. We, the ushers and the security keep telling them not to dance in the aisle and they keep dancing in the aisle. And I felt so awkward. I felt so uncomfortable going on the stage in the second half to tell my audience not to dance in the aisle because of fire code as if you know if there's a fire people that are dancing in the aisle wouldn't run through the aisle and get out of there but regardless the fire code this is exactly the opposite than what we want to inspire people we want to inspire people to dance we want to inspire people to sing along and and then there was a conflict and i i went on stage in the second half and i made an announcement please do not dance in the aisle because the management asking us not to and that's the fire code and that's what we need to do please come on stage i invited them on stage and the audience came on stage and dance on stage during the show rachel uh question uh please Yes, we have a question in the chat. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, great. Um, one of the presenters saw that uh, you guys did an event about Buddhist prayers, and she grew up Buddhist, and she's wondering if you integrate Buddhism into the ensemble music. Yes, yes, we do. Uh, we have a new album called Four Divine States of Mind, 
and this is based on the four divine states of mind teaching in Buddhism. It's called Brahma Viharas in Sanskrit. It's a whole album that came out last July. So we incorporate some of the blessings for joy, for vicarious joy, uh, blessings for teachings and blessings for loving kindness. Uh, we incorporate a song from the Buddhist tradition that we created called Compassion. And we worked in, since 2008, I worked with the Dalai Lama on finding ways to increase compassion in the world. And the Dalai Lama invited me in 2008 to Seattle to be the uh, featured artist at the Seeds of Compassion conference that was in Seattle. And uh, Desmond Tutu was there. There were spiritual leaders from all over the world. The Dalai Lama initiated it. And we gave the concert uh, for the Dalai Lama event there. We were the gala the featured artist in the gala event at the Opera House in Seattle. So, you see, the the teaching of Buddhism for compassion and loving kindness and vicarious joy and equanimity are resonating with our teaching that comes from Jewish and Sufi traditions and for some of the contemporary contemplative Christian teachings for love and loving your neighbor. So we are connecting all that into our work. Yes. Rachel? Um, so I have another question. Um, and very glad that you're taking a rest right now, but hopefully you'll want to tour in the future. And uh, do you do virtual work in the meantime? Yes, yes. So we are doing concerts through Zoom. And the way it works is we film ourselves in my living room or in my garden. I have a big backyard, so we can have my ensemble six feet apart in the backyard. And we film it and we we pretend that we are in the concert hall and we talk to the community, you know, if we know which community invited us. So we talk to them and we encourage them to dance and to sing along. And we do the whole thing for the camera. Sometimes my, my wife uh, go out to the patio and she, she's the only one and she dances and she sings and, and we kind of talking to her to have a human being there. So we make it real. Uh, but, um, it works and we've done an international festival we've done two international festivals over the summer the the uh, uh, shift music summit in july and we did uh, the national psalms festival in may and um, we do it we have another one in february that we are taping and it's going to be broadcast by the community and uh, we do workshops we do webinars um, we do it all through zoom and as soon as actually we have a date in florida in person date in april so we are flying to, we're starting touring in april this april we are flying to florida um uh, rachel um worked with us on that uh, i think we're going to be in the university of gainesville florida so we are we're going back on the road after a year off which was very nice for us fortunately but you know we need the audience we, we really rather play and sing for audience than to the camera. That's, that's definitely uh, correct. Rachel? I'm, I, everyone who's on the phone, I'm getting questions on my um, cell phone from people <laughs> as well. Um, and uh, did you, um, do you guys do residency programs, like teaching for younger kids and stuff, or yes. college age, or...? Yeah, we do from preschool to nursing home. We go to every age group. We adapt our message to every age group. And I have 35 years experience teaching in every kind of school that you can imagine, from preschools to kindergarten, elementary, middle school, college, high schools, everything. Can you do that virtually while you're... Yeah, yeah. And we do that. You know, for example, in, in March... I mean, this February, we're doing a residency uh, that we were supposed to do last March. And the community, uh, you know, in San Luis Obispo, they, they kept waiting for the pandemic to end. They, they, they didn't want us to do it on Zoom. Since March, they're waiting. And now, now they, gave, they gave up. They said, okay, just, just do it on Zoom. So I do the whole residency on Zoom because we have, uh, we have a school, uh, event on Sunday morning. We have a Friday night event. I have a, a pre-concert uh, talk 
uh, it's a it's a whole you know it's a four or five different events over a weekend that I'm doing partially pre-recorded and partially live zoom and we do it you know that that's not a problem but uh, if we could we would rather do it in person like we're doing in Florida in in April of course yeah, and and that if um, if that continues hopefully it will um, there are um, there's a possibility of blocking that even at this late date. Mm -hmm. So just letting you know. Yeah. So I'd like to play for you a little sample of what we do now with the new sound that we, we produce with uh, electric um, guitars and, and electric bass. And, you know, some people love this new sound and some people prefer our traditional sound. So we go, you know, we, we tour with the electric bass and we tour without the electric bass. We do both versions now. So I'd like you to enjoy this uh, song from our last album. Here's the music clip. Um, enjoy this song. Notice the sound, the new sound for this new album, Unity of the Heart, that includes more elements than just the traditional elements. Shadow, you 
right so as you can see the these are world-class musician this uh clarinet player in my ensemble norik manukian he played on the movie dead men walking he's one of the busiest player in hollywood on all the hollywood movies uh world class and some people are very excited about this new sound a lot of people love that and some presenters tell me you know we don't want that we want just the traditional instruments the traditional sound the way you have it on your other albums with ensemble and i said fine that's what you know we do that all the time uh, so some of our tours include the full ensemble with the electric bass and the drum set and the electric guitar and some of our tours we go just with four musicians or five musicians or seven musicians just the traditional instruments without those new elements so it's up to the community it's up to the presenter um, and uh, we're happy to do both if we have no questions i'll be happy to play one more clip for you before we go it's also from the new album and it has this new sound and this is a rendition of john lennon imagine and this is uh, a new version that we created and it's dedicated to 11 different organizations that work for peace that this video uh, collects donations and uh, promote the work of those 11 uh, organizations. They're all non-profit organizations in the Middle East that work for peace. I'll share the screen and we'll watch this last song and uh, let's keep in touch. Be well, everybody. <laughs> I'm not afraid of 